What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Just M if you're new here. So I want to do a new series on my channel where I give you guys some tips and tricks on how to find your style, how to elevate your style, and I'm going to call this series Style 101. So for today's video and also the first video of the series, I want to talk to you guys about ways to look a little bit more put together and ways to elevate your style. Have you guys ever noticed like no matter how much money you guys spend on putting together clothes, putting together outfits, buying shoes, it just never looks quite as good as maybe your favorite influencer or how the celebrity styles it, even if the piece itself is literally the same piece. So I want to break it down, share a few practical tips with you guys, ways that helped me look a little bit more put together and hopefully will help you guys as well. Just a quick disclaimer too, these are definitely all personal opinions of what I found to be helpful. Really what makes you feel the most comfortable is what works at the end of the day but I just want to give a few, you know, guidelines that have helped me and hopefully will also help you guys as well. So tip number one is all about materials. First of all, the actual material itself really matters. I would say natural materials like leather, wool, cotton, silk, etc. tend to look more refined. It tends to look more chic and expensive compared to artificial materials like polyester, rayon, acrylics, etc. Typically, I find that they have a little bit more of that shiny kind of artificial texture that makes your outfit just look more cheap altogether. What I'm showing you guys here are three different clothing pieces. They all have silk-like qualities and two of them are actually synthetic. The first one here, very easy to tell. It looks very cheap. It's a blend of polyester and viscose. This one is a little bit nicer. It's made of acetate, which is typically dubbed as a cheaper alternative to silk. This last one here is actual 100% silk. You can really tell the difference between the three in terms of shine and fluidity when you place them side by side. Also showing you guys a comparison across different wool types. The first material is a blend of wool and cashmere. As you can see, the sweater is already starting to pill. This is pretty common for wools that include cashmere since it's a little bit more delicate. However, with the cashmere blend, it makes the sweater a lot softer than regular wool and preserves heat a lot better. Mohair wool has quite a distinct look. You can definitely recognize it once you know what to look for. They tend to have longer, finer fibers, making it softer to touch. However, with the long fibers, it also results in many mohair items being a little bit prickly. It does give a very luxurious look and texture compared to many other wool types, so a good option if you guys are looking to diversify your knits collection. This last example here is a 100% merino wool sweater. This is dubbed the king of wool because the fibers tend to be thinner and softer compared to regular wool. Because of how tightly woven the material is, it's really difficult to pill and makes the longevity of the sweater a lot better. I know it's hard to avoid synthetic materials out there right now. So definitely looking for blends would work even better than 100% artificial materials. So next time you guys go shopping, definitely make sure to check the labels because they it can speak volumes to how good a garment is from a quality perspective and how long it can last in your wardrobe. Tip number two is tailoring. Even before you start thinking about trends and, you know, getting on that bandwagon, I highly suggest really building a well-tailored wardrobe with the garments that you already have and love. Before the industrial revolution and just the mass production of clothing nowadays, Back in the day, people actually had tailors to custom make their clothing for them to fit their body, to fit their proportions. And typically these garments are meant to last years and years and years. And for some reason, we kind of lost sight of that ever since we discovered machines and fast fashion. It's even more expensive to tailor things than to just buy certain things new. But my argument is, how well a piece fits on your body makes all the difference in terms of 
elevating your look and making your outfit look way more expensive. So I highly, highly recommend looking at tailoring. Even if you don't have money to afford on tailoring, teaching yourself the basics of sewing, hemming pants, which I feel like is the most common kind of alteration that you would do, or when you're shopping, really scrutinizing the fit of your clothes before you actually purchase it. So for jeans, what I typically like to look for is first, just the waist. I don't like to have too much of a gaping waist, so I'll always try to check and see how much of a gap there is, while still making sure that it's not too tight sitting on my hips. The second thing is definitely the length or the hem of the jean. These ones I actually had to get tailored because they were a little bit too long. I got them just right before it hits the floor just to elongate my leg. The third thing is really all about the leg. So here I chose something that is very straight leg. This I find to be most flattering for my body type. I can't do skinny jeans anymore. I feel like those are just super unflattering. But these ones, you know, work really well. They're also one color no distressing, so that really helps make them look a lot more elevated and well-fitted. So some of the things that I look for when it comes to coats, the first thing is definitely where the shoulder seam hits. I typically find the best fitted ones to be a little bit after your shoulder, but if I'm looking for something that's more of a slouchy, like super casual type look, then I would go for more of a drop shoulder and so it seem it would be a little bit down here versus where it hits right now, which I think is perfect. The second thing that I look for is the sleeve length. So for this one, I actually also got this tailored because it was just way too long on me. Just having them right past your wrist is the best. And then this makes it look like, you know, you still feel cozy and comfortable but you still have access to your hands and you don't look like you're a little kid. And then the shape of the coat. So for this one, um, I was looking for something that was, again, a straight kind of flow through. It's a little bit boxy on me and it just makes it so that I have room inside to layer. So if you see like when I button it, I still have a lot of room in this coat. I don't feel like too bundled and stuffed like a sausage when I'm out and about in the winter time, even when I have to layer. One tip I would say is always size up in coats. You can always tailor like in proportions, but I find making sure that you're not overstuffed here in this area is super important. The last thing that I look at is definitely the length of the coat. So this one hits right uh, below my knee, which is perfect because it definitely looks very oversized and long like a maxi coat, but at the same time it doesn't swallow me and it's too long. The worst thing I can get from my proportions is probably a coat that hits right at the hip. It will overly accentuate that portion, but I think for this one it gives me the length, it's not too long, and yeah, I think it's perfect. Tip number three is caring for your things. I think this is something that's often overlooked, again, because people just tend to buy quickly and discard quickly, but I find that keeping your pieces looking newer for longer is also a key piece in terms of having quality pieces that last in your wardrobe. You don't want to be showing up with an outfit where your coat is pilling and, you know, your shoes are leather that's cracking everywhere. No, that's not cute. So I'm gonna show you guys how I typically take care of my wool pieces. Here I'm using a lint remover that actually gets rid of some of the pilling that occurs. This is a great way to keep your sweaters looking clean and fresh like they're brand new. A recent practice that I've started to do is really care for my leather goods as I compile really good quality leather pieces. First, I start with a leather cleaner. This just gets rid of any impurities, any mud, dirt off your shoes. I then go in with a leather conditioner. This helps to keep your leather hydrated. It's like skin, you know, you gotta take care of it before it gets all crackly. And the last thing I like to do is just add a repellent. This is really great to protect your leather if you step in puddles or if you get stains on them. 
My last tip is really to just launder your clothes properly. I know this sounds basic, but how many of us have ruined sweaters through throwing them in the wash and not putting on the right setting? I like to separate my colors for different washes. Delicate items like sweaters, I either hand wash them or wash them in a cold water setting with a low spin cycle. Tip number four is dressing for your body type. I can go on about this for too long, so I feel like it definitely deserves its own video. But just in general, I think knowing how to dress for your body type, where you want to accentuate, which parts of your body you like to lengthen versus shorten, will really help you achieve that balanced look for your frame. For example, for myself, I tend to be more of a pear body shape, and so with that, I want to accentuate my shoulders because they are the skinniest part of my body. And then in contrast, I would like to de emphasize or shift focus away from my hips. With my body type, I find that accentuating my waist, it helps me look slimmer, but also makes me look a little bit taller as well. The t-shirt hitting my waist is just not flattering at all, but it's such a huge difference once you let a little bit of your waist peek out. For pants, I tend to go for more of a straight leg or a wider leg. On the right, you'll see that the pant just lightly grazes over my hips, and that just gives an illusion of a slimmer frame, in my opinion. Keeping the theme of accentuating my waist, I find that adding a belt really helps break up the outfit and gives an illusion of longer legs as well. That was more of a spark notes version of it, but let me know if you guys want a more comprehensive video that spans across different body shapes as well. Tip number five is accessorizing. Believe it or not, your outfits are not just your clothes, but it's really your shoes, your bags, your accessories, your hats. Previously, I've always made the mistake of spending the majority of my money on just clothes, but unfortunately, I just over-index my focus on that versus everything else that makes up an outfit. It made it feel like my outfit was always incomplete, and it felt like the clothes were actually wearing me versus the other way around. Now, I actually intentionally spread out my clothing purchases so that it's kind of like 70 30 or 60 40 where i would direct you know 70 or 60 percent of my budget to clothing and then the other remaining portion to accessories the other tip i like to do is i need to spread out my clothing purchases where it's like every three pieces of clothing i buy i would want to buy an accessory it's a little bit mechanic i want to say but honestly helps because it does make me think about you know, my purchases and not just blindly buying clothes, but also, you know, making sure that I'm building out the rest of my wardrobe as well. And that's all of the tips I have for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed the first installment of the Style 101 series. If you guys have any other tips, make sure to put them in the comment box below and I will see you guys next time. Bye! Go.